Throughout the 60s and 70s with the New Age movement, we saw the rise of a Crowleyan society based on the concept of love. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, and tantric sex practices or sex magic were meant to liberate the minds and expand human beings to a plane of higher consciousness. In the end, these endeavors simply proved to be nothing more than hedonistic indulgences of excess. Possible thanks to the economic boom America experienced after the Second World War, which turned America into an economic superpower for the first time ever, thanks to the sacrifice of the greatest generation. Gurus and spiritual leaders were almost everywhere, where flower children spread until they started to wilt away, burned out from all the excess and embracing a new yuppie lifestyle. Baby boomers had an immensely fertile and wealthy country to work with and essentially bankrupted it. There is the increased debt to GDP ratio we have to deal with. There is a notion of boomers who are constantly cutting taxes for themselves, leaving future generations to inherit the debt. They allowed essentially the infrastructure of this country to crumble. Public schools have been left to shambles along with the rising cost of college education thanks to government involvement. The burning of fossil fuels and climate change, banks and businesses through trickle-down Reagan economic systems have become too big to fail now, further expanding upon the wealth gap. Vox had a decent article on the damage boomers have done. I'll put a link below in the description if you want to read it. We can also look to Pew Research to note the growing wealth gap and income distribution, noting the widening of the gap as well as the decline of the middle class itself. Meanwhile, more profit is made than ever before since production is always increasing due to advancements in technology. But this isn't meant to be an attack on the boomers, nor is it an attack on New Age forms of Hinduistic and occult thinking via Crowley that they embraced. It's just an example of the bigger picture, of how people fail other people, and how all imminent movements tend to become corrupted due to the flaws and imperfections of people themselves, and that we essentially need something outside to come in in order to influence the system itself. As we brought up with Tolkien and Hysod, the ages have become a cheap and denigrated form of what came prior, denigrating from gold to silver and then silver to bronze and bronze to iron, etc. The point is that as human beings attempt to organize, the more of a mess they tend to make. The baby boomers are a good example of this, where their organization led to their own sense of access. But this organized power structure began forming, and like all power structures, it operates on the basis of oppression. And from that oppression, of course, comes a stifling of variety or a chance for change to occur. This is the body with organs, representing ordered and fascist-like structures that are, of course, supposed to be juxtaposed to their antithetical body without organs that uses rhizomatic models of dispersion and difference instead of identicality. Of course, with rhizomatic models now being reduced to an ordered or tree-like structure of society itself, we'd entered into a dark Delusian control society, where all barriers essentially have been broken down and everything is now a homogenous haze, where we don't even know where we are, completely under control. Now, in a rigged system, rhizomes simply assimilate into the root model and function alongside it. In other words, we essentially live in a centralized context and are trying to implement a decentralized system in that centralized context. Needless to say, it doesn't work since whatever is placed in that context will serve the context itself. One would need a decentralized context in order for decentralized ideas to work efficiently and effectively. To Oswald Spangler, high culture is of course an organism Thus, society does not move by ages or epochs necessarily, but evolves like a biological organism. This civilization of ours is, of course, a Faustian one, driven by a deal with the devil. And as all civilizations, our Faustian one too, will fall as the West declines to a state of decay. Still, it is interesting that he uses an organism to attribute society to and civilization to, right? Since it's an accurate term in the Deleuzian schizoanalytic sense for ordered, root-based models, as we previously discussed. Though, you know, Deleuze obviously came much later, but it's interesting, the connection. Winter is thus coming for the West. In fact, winter is already here, not far into the future. All civilizations are doomed to die. Even Tolkien discussed the inevitability of our death. Our death is more akin to a death, however. It is a spiritual death, where not only love, 
but the spirit or soul is lost. And thus, like Tolkien, as well as land, the need for the transcendental outside to come inside. For human beings have their limits. For prosperity and progress, we've denigrated over time, becoming more superficial as a species, creating more messes, leading to artifices and becoming imitations of the past. With AI, all will become imitation, a virtual world where nothing real remains. Only the outside can liberate us eschatologically from life. In either scenario, death reigns supreme, but perhaps the chance of an afterlife remains, either spiritually to Tolkien or perhaps through AI to land, where AI evolves onward as we perish to the past as an extinct entity or biological organism.